So it's all okay. to, so if this I is all it. H Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Storage Switzerland is an analyst firm focused on the storage, virtualization, and cloud marketplaces. This is an ongoing series of chalk talks we are going to have on various technologies. And today we're going to dive deep on solid state storage. So the first thing to think about in solid state storage is where do you use it? I, I've, my first solid state uh, implementation was almost 20 years ago now. And it was a, a external box that attached via a SCSI cable to a server. And at that point in time, that was the only option available. Uh, nowadays, it seems like there's 100 ways to implement SSD. The good news is there's not really 100, but let's go through some of the more popular ones. The first uh, place to look at solid state disk is in the server itself. There ten, right now, there seems to be about three options on how to do that. The first is the SSD drive. The SSD drive looks like any physical hard disk. If you, I was going to bring one in to show you, but it looks like a hard drive. There's really no point in doing that. Uh, and you install it into the server just like you would any other uh, hard disk. Uh, the, the advantage of doing this is if you have a free spot, spot in your server, it's very easy to install and be into the uh, solid state generation uh, very, very quickly. Um, the, the, next, the downside to solid state, though, is that it connects via some type of cable, typically today a SATA connection. Uh, SATA, on, if we're using the latest technologies, uh, or it could also be a SAS connection, typically go at about six gigabits a second, uh, which is fine, but it's not as fast as solid state can go. Uh, the primary use case we see for these drives in the server class um, world is as a boot drive. So you can quickly start up a server and get it running. Most of your data in the, in the traditional data center nowadays is good, probably going to come off of a SAN anyways. So that, that's where we see a lot of that. The, the second option uh, that has gained a lot of popularity is a PCIe SSD. And the way that works it's a, it's a PCIe card with solid state memory on it. There's different forms of, of how that's implemented, but essentially this card plugs into a slot in your server uh, and then has direct access to the CPU. So we're not limited by the drive interface bandwidth like we are with the other technologies. However, uh, at least at this point, most PCIe SSDs cannot be booted from. So we actually see a fair uh, amount of implementations where a small SSD is bought for boot, and then the PCIe SSD is used for performance-sensitive uh, operations. So that, that's another uh, advantage there. The key thing in PCIe is really going to be how much space does it take. Uh, many of the, especially the initial cards were full-height, full-size cards. Uh, if you had a 1U especially or even a 2U server, you may not have had room to install one of these bigger cards, although we are starting to see some smaller cards come to market now. A new option in the server installed SSD market is what we call SSD DIMMs. These are solid state drives that look like a memory DIMM, a RAM memory DIMM, except they have a little cable coming out of them that also leads to a SATA connection. So they look like memory, and they just have a little cable coming out of the side that hooks into your SATA or SAS connection. Uh, again, that makes them very viable as a boot device. Uh, obviously, they don't have the uh, space constraints that a PCIe-based uh, card would have. Uh, so there, there's some interesting use cases uh, there as well. What's, uh, what the downside to all the server-based SSDs, though, is they're really designed just for a server. You can't share them. Uh, so what we see is a, a big use case, especially a PCIe, is using that as a cache so that data can be uh, pulled in locally off of the shared storage device or even off of local hard drives and cached in high-speed um, PCIe. So it makes it uh, very beneficial there. In the shared storage world, we have two big competing interests when it comes to how to use SSD. The first is the sort of the legacy model, 
where you've, you've already bought a storage system and it has hard drives in it, and then you buy some solid state disk drives as essentially another drive shelf for, uh, to use as your tiering mechanism. Uh, now, initially, this was a, a, a totally independent uh, tier of storage. You would manually put data on it. Uh, vendors have come out with a technology called auto tiering that analyzes data and moves data up to that SSD tier uh, as needed. The downside to SSD in these legacy storage systems is twofold. Number one, this is pretty capacity inefficient. Uh, again, they use uh, the same drive form factor SSD drives that we talked about in servers, except they're installing them now into a uh, enterprise storage system. Uh, you, the, the, those drives are not uh, space efficient from a, a, a size perspective. Secondly, uh, the speed of the controller that processes all the data coming in and out of the box up to the switch was really designed for mechanical drives. It's expecting latency uh, and things like that. So the, it can get overrun from a performance perspective. The other option is a solid state uh, array, which is a device that is purely designed for solid state and has a relatively simple set of storage services. So where this enterprise class system might have uh, snapshots and thin provisioning and replication, uh, this, the data services that the appliance would provide is uh, focused specifically on managing flash and, and doing RAID uh, specifically designed for flash and things like that. So the way this works uh, is it allows them to be much more uh, dense in their packaging of the flash memory because they can break the const uh, constraints of having to look like a drive. So in, in most cases, this can be a series of uh, modules that get plugged into this device and provide very, very dense uh, scaling within a, a small package. The advantage of doing that is now you can attach either uh, directly to a SAN or directly to a server, depending on your environment. So this uh, memory array sort of technique, if we're going into a server, could be used to provide multi terabytes of flash memory capacity, where, for example, a PCIe card that we talked about earlier has, is limited really to what that one card can do. You might have a couple cards, but again, almost any server you're going to run into space limitations. With this connection, we can go out. Where it gets particularly interesting, though, is instead of this being a server, if this is a SAN switch, with servers attached to it, this becomes another option to store data on in the environment. So that gives you very, very high performance uh, to these servers, and it's something that can be shared across those servers. So things to look for from the, the appliance vendors are how much capacity can they give you per, per rack unit, and then also how much performance do they deliver out of that box. Uh, again, each of these have their use case. We can clearly see an environment where you might boot from SSD and access this memory directly, or you might even have a PCIe SSD in the server for caching and then pull data off of the SAN. So every, every one of these components uh, has some value in the environment. You just have to apply the right run. Or we think memory arrays uh, that type of technology is really going to be designed more for the uh, enterprise class environment where you're going to need uh, large capacity flash and, high, and very, very high performance. Thank you for tuning in. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Violin Memory Systems.